Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this episode of Nerd Caliber. I'm here with Bridget Byrne, Costume and Couture. And what do you have for us today? Today, I have my Pale Rose Pearl from Steven Universe. Excellent. So what can you tell us about this magnificent dress? No, oh, thank you. Uh, what I set out was to transform a 2D 2D design into a 3D design, which was not, it, it doesn't always translate from a cartoon character into a, a real life uh, dress. So I had the challenge of uh, making it into a, a functional outfit. So why did you pick this dress from, from that cartoon series? Why did you decide to design this? So Pearl was a character that resonated with me. Uh, she had a couple of um, certain personality traits that uh, could probably be best described as uh, OCD. <laughs> uh, so she was very motherly caring, but always had um, had to have her finger, her thumbs in every pie. So. Uh, it, she was definitely a personality that I related to, so I knew I wanted to cosplay her, but it wasn't until the episode uh, later in the series that um, she wore this dress that I knew, oh, that was the one. That's that's the outfit that I'm going to wear. Okay, so let's, let's, let's start from the beginning. What materials did you have to gather to, to make this? For this outfit in particular, she was a royal attendant uh, to one of the mighty uh, leaders of the universe. So I knew she required a lot of really rich textures and a lot of rich um, materials. So I chose a lot of satins, uh, really shiny fabrics that made, made the outfit pop. Uh, so I picked uh, satins and sequins and a lot of beading and organza, iridescent organza, to really make it an eyepiece. Because even though uh, Pearl, this Pearl was a background character, she still would have been dressed really lavishly for the court, as uh, would have been translated for a 3D character, you know, as an actual real life costume. Oh, okay. So I'm sure we could spend hours and hours of having you explain how you put each piece together. <laughs> how about we talk about some of the, the challenging pieces? What was the most challenging pieces of uh, or parts of it, of putting this together? It was definitely working with the organza. It's a particular fabric that frays so easily. Uh, and it, uh, if you can see, it's all the overlay of the skirt and the peplum is all organza so it was a particular uh trick to work with but uh just takes it takes a lot of patience and then uh just as well the beating over it it was all done by hand oh, okay is it a very comfortable dress would you say is, is it uh, i know some some uh costumes can be very hot when you go to a convention or something like that or something similar like that uh what would you, would you say it's very comfortable it actually is. So this is uh, the last cosplay I made, which I uh, presented first in 2018. And it is by far one of the most comfortable cosplays I have ever worn. Uh, it's just a very simple dress with a side zip. And uh, uh, I made it purposefully so since I don't uh, cosplay as much these days. I'm mostly just taking commissions and so I just wanted something that I would be comfortable in all day, and this was it. Okay, is is the it looks like the golden piece on top? It's very different material than the rest of it. Um, was that difficult putting that together? I mean, it it looks like if I'm assuming that if you put two different materials together, there's a possibility they could really mess that up. Mm -hmm. So the top layer is. Uh, micro sequins that are woven into a, a layer of stretch uh, poly, um, uh, into a, a layer of um, stretch material. So it was a little bit of, a little bit diff difficult to work with, but again, that just requires patience. The, <laughs> the most difficult thing about it was the fact that here I am two years later still sweeping up sequins. <laughs> 
<laughs> it just got everywhere. Uh, but it's it was a price that I was happy to pay. How how are you able to look at something that was originally in an animation and then formulate it so that it could be produced in real life so that it's not too big on you, too small on you, too tall or too short? Uh, how, how do you, what's the math behind that? So there's definitely a process between taking proportions that are appropriate on a 2D character, on a cartoon character, on an anime character, and making it uh, tr and translating it onto an actual real life body, specifically mine in this case. Uh, so I just worked with uh, my own proportions to make a dress that was flattering on me. I have had other uh, projects in the past which have, I have been more faithful to the design and not so much to the proportions that I needed to translate to and that it ha and it hasn't always been uh, such a su success however uh, I've learned from my past mistakes and fortunately came up with uh, came up with this girl okay so I, I know you you make these dresses and you sell them to other cosplayers um, how do you handle whenever someone may say something like, um, this almost fits me, I just need some adjustment made. Is there any advice you could say about that or any ideas behind that? So when it comes to my own commission uh, commissions, uh, when I work with a client, I make it very clear that uh, if I'm not working with you in person, there's no way that I can guarantee a 100% fix. I will do the absolute best that I can, uh, especially if I'm working with people over a long distance. My current client lives uh, farther down south, so I um, can only really communicate with her over Skype or Zoom uh, in teleconference, so I can just eyeball the adjustments that need to be made. Uh, fortunately for her, we had uh, pretty similar measurements to start out with, but um, for other clients that don't have similar measurements to me, it's, you know, I'm just doing the best I can if I can't, you know, touch and adjust and work with you in person. Um, and I make that very clear up front. So you, you went from being a cosplayer in, in the beginning and now you have your own business. <laughs> uh, what made you decide to venture into this path? I love, I just love sewing so much. I was never very strong at modeling or cosplay. <laughs> if you look at any of my social media accounts, I'm not really great at keeping keeping those up and maintaining them. I'm not a wonderful um, personality when it comes to being online. I'm, you know, so focused and such a workhorse. I only focus on the sewing. Uh, so. Uh, when it comes to that, it's just it just made more sense to me to just focus on the sewing. Uh, so thankfully, I've had a, a number of wonderful clients who've reached out to me who, uh, you know, trust my services, and they've been very, very happy with me so far. Um, but as far as um, professionalism goes, I work full time. Uh, my day to day, I work as as a tailor, and I have for the last. Um, six or so years and so um, um and about a year or two ago I went back to school to FIT and I'm working on a costume design certification so it just kind of all lined up to make sense like that okay okay so how, how long and how much cost would you say you put into uh, that dress this one in particular I put in probably close to 30 or 40 hours. Uh, I do have a breakdown on my Tumblr, uh, actually, and, and on my portfolio website as to the exact cost and materials um, for how much it did cost. I think as far as materials go, it only, it didn't even break $200 only. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so I provided all those references in case someone saw this costume and they say hey I want to make that exact same thing so I was like you know what here you go here's all the resources have at it if, if I may ask how, how do you do with how, how do you deal with time management um, I know um, you probably get 
I mean, this looks amazing. So I'm assuming you probably get a lot of people um, knocking on your door online, at least, and uh, asking you to make this or design that or something like that. Uh, how, how do you um, manage yourself so that you don't overburden yourself? Oh, that's a wonderful question. I'm still trying to find the answers. <laughs> Since I'm all, almost always trying to say yes, trying to um, make uh, costumes for people because I'm just so enthusiastic. I love new projects. I always want to do something new. But uh, I mean, and it's been easy to say yes to everything, especially during the pandemic because it's not like anything else is going on anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely time management is not my best uh not my best skill so i usually end up working about seven days a week at least you know 10 to 14 hours a day okay okay so concerning that going back to that dress um how how would someone take good care of it whether it be during the convention after the convention i i, I don't think sometimes people think about the after you know, they take the before and putting it on, but then the after of making sure it's still in good condition. Uh, how, how, what, what would you advise to take care of that dress? So for this one in particular, since it is uh, made with um, polyester satin, so, um, definitely to avoid any and all oils. Don't get any. <laughs> I have a horror story for when I was um, making the, this dress. I was at a friend's place and we were all working on our projects together and someone had a plate of pepperoni. I accidentally, I accidentally put a piece of the fabric on top of it and had a meltdown because now I had an oil stain uh, right smack dab in the middle of the sleeve. Um, so that was a nightmare to get out. But um, uh, as far as storage goes, it's really just a matter of hanging it on a, on a good hanger. Um, so I, I, I want to invest in the, you would want to invest in the, um, the big plushy hangers that have the satin covering. Um, you know, if you're going to be spending this much time and this much energy and, uh, this much of your sanity and this much money on a costume, you want to be able to take care of it and make it last through the years like you would any other quality um, high cost garment. Uh, so uh, pre-washing fabric before you even work on it. And then um, I only hand wash this one uh, from now on now that it's made, especially since it has so much beading. <laughs> okay. So is there anything else about the dress you would like to share with our viewers? Um. I would, uh, so I ended up using this dress uh, while it was still being made as a homework assignment for one of my FIT classes. I was taking a hand sewing class and so um, I ended up uh, using the this as one of my projects. So uh, we had to use, um, I think five or six different kinds of stitches uh, special stitches, so we had to use a, like a whip stitch, a blind stitch, uh, uh, beading stitches, uh, you know, a variety of different kinds of uh, specialty hand stitches to show our proficiency for the class. And so I was working on this project at the time and I was like, oh, wonderful, two birds, one stone. <laughs> oh, okay, excellent. So anyone that wants to reach out to you either about advice or, or a commission or anything like that, where can they find you? So they can find me at www.bridgetcostumecouture.com uh, or they can find me on Facebook as Bridget Costume Couture, on Instagram as Bridget Couture, and uh, on YouTube as Notch and Swatch. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. And to our viewers out there, thank you for watching. Um, um, stay tuned for more cosmic content. Have a great day. Thank you, thank you so much. Take care.